In Northland, a large group of people are struggling to save the survivors of a mass stranding of pilot whales at Spirits Bay. For the last two and a half days, volunteers have been keeping the whales alive, and Anne Anderson is one of the many people who have spent hours in the water. Yeah, Rose came out to help um, these poor whales out. And hopefully today they'll be freed back into the sea. Yeah, that'll be me. Anne's one of a group of 160 volunteers who have been brought together after members of the local iwi, Ngāti Kuri, alerted the Department of Conservation about the stranding. Wednesday morning we found two dead pilot whales um, just at the, at the mouth of the creek here and uh, given it's stranding season we sent a staff member down to have a look at the beach and found probably another 20 or 30 on the beach already and a pod, a large pod spread over about two kilometres that was continually stranding so we sent out the, um, the message then to you know, to all the um, Project Jonah, Far North Whale Rescue, that we've got a potential really nasty situation with the mass stranding on our hands. By the time rescue has arrived, the stranding had turned into a real tragedy, and many of the whales were beyond help. Originally we, we had 49 live whales on the beach. Some of them had been there all day and were oh, right at the far end of the beach, and there was just absolutely nothing we could do for them, so we, we euthanised them. Uh, there were five stranded at at the eastern end of the beach that were right up on the rocks and again we, we couldn't get to them so we euthanised them and we had a further 25 alive on the beach. Unknown number of dead whales and that's mainly because the ones that were dead got sucked back out to sea because the sea was so big. The area isn't a known stranding site and while there's been a lot of research into strandings, nobody can be sure why they happen. In terms of what triggers a stranding, that varies. It's like saying, well, you know, what caused a car accident? It can be any number of things, and it's the same with a whale stranding. Often it's one of the individuals is injured or has something wrong with it, and then the others respond, and kind of like we would if there's somebody that's hurt or injured, we go and help them. They do the same thing for their fellow pod members. The next step is to get the whales back into the water, but the rough seas at Spirits Bay makes it impossible to release them here. We can't relaunch them here at Spirits Bay. It's a huge sea and the weather's not going to change for another two to three days. So our only real option is getting them to the east coast where there's no swell. Uh, and unfortunately that's quite a long way away. So the logistics of moving 24 live whales is not that easy. We've got a number of trucks and we'll be loading the whales onto the backs of those trucks and trucking them down to Rarawa Beach. The trucks are lined with sand and straw and the long loading process begins. The lifting frames are specially designed to avoid crushing the animals. But before you can pick them up, you have to get the mat under the whale. Okay. Are you looking at your right to roll back? Yep, right to roll back. What am I doing? The whales are doing pretty good at the moment. They're all cool, calm and collected. And a lot of them have just been sitting here in the water, just quietly, just taking a bit of a rest and a recovery um, after their ordeal the other night. It takes several hours to load all the whales, but eventually the convoy is ready to start the 50-kilometre journey to Raroa Beach on the east coast. In spite of the heat, the trucks have to move slowly to avoid further injuries to the whales. But even with the greatest of care, three die on the way. So far, most of them have done really well. Unfortunately, we lost three whales on the trip. And they were just here in the last little bit, you know. Literally, they could see the ocean, but we lost Buddy, Rolly and Scarface. The bonding is so strong with these animals, if we send them out just all over the place randomly, then they're likely to go up the beach and strand somewhere else. But if we can get them together as a, as a group, then they'll support each other if one of them's not really very well or is still has a bit of an injury or still isn't orientated, and then they can head out together as a group. Finally, as darkness falls, the last of the whales is returned to the sea. 
we're just lifting the last whale out um, and it's gone really smoothly uh, and it's actually still light which was a, 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 real, a real bonus. Uh, so yeah as soon as we get them all together in a, in a group we'll, we'll push the pontoon whales out probably about a 500 metres and we'll let them go. They're all in amazing condition and just ready to get out of here. The rescue face more sadness the following day when seven of the 21 survivors re-beached at Rarua and had to be euthanised. The other 14 were never seen again.